Wow! Look how far we've come over the years. Flying cars, metropolises, and space colonizations, truly marking another giant leap for mankind. Oh, and uh, by the way, this is only the year 2022. I mean, this is how so many old films depicted the future. From the silent era all the way to the present, the future is always perceived as vast skyscrapers, highways that overpass even the tallest buildings, flying transport, AI integrated into human life, and much more. Now that decades have passed, those future settings have either passed our present timeline or are just around the corner. In this video, I'm going to be looking at a few films and other media that portray our time and see what was predicted well and what wasn't. A short disclaimer, these future story worlds cover the entire film, so you can forget this being the one million video talking about Back to the Future Part 2. Other than that, let's begin. The Running Man, 2017 to 2019. Looking back at this film, I think it's aged quite well. The film depicts a worldwide economic collapse, the closest recession being the 2007 to 2008 financial crisis. Helicopters seem like something straight out of Vietnam. Apache helicopters today have a bit more firepower. It has onboard wireframe scan technology. I guess we have thermal imaging nowadays. It won't give you an estimated scan of targets, but at least it's a clearer image than wireframe. There's that clip showing the edited footage of the Bakersfield Massacre. Let's be real here. News outlets always edit stuff to their liking. Remember what Donald Trump said about Mexicans? They're bringing drugs, they're bringing crime, they're rapists, and some, I assume, are good people. Many news outlets and people who make compilations of him never include the, and some I assume are good people, edited into a half-truth in order to satisfy a common viewpoint. The only way you can get an honest truth and make your own honest interpretation of things is to watch something raw and unedited. Buildings and architecture aren't ridiculously tall. There are skyscrapers, but it's not a metropolis like most films. It's more grounded, and in doing so, more realistic to the real 2019. With the exception of a few shots. Lights. Kitchen. Toast and coffee. Alexa would definitely do the job here. Exercise on TV? You can find that anywhere now, even on YouTube. Speaking of YouTube... Hello! Are you subscribed to my YouTube channel and hit that notification bell? What are you talking about? I'll take that as a no. If that's the case, do you have a few minutes to talk about our beloved Jesus Christ? The film predicts digital face replacements, which is doable. The most popular example being Furious 7, with Paul Walker's brothers being used as stand-ins and then have Paul's face over the bodies. However, this probably took a long time to make, whereas the film makes it look instant. The film apparently inspired American Gladiators. One of the producers showed clips of this film to a network and apparently said, we're doing exactly this, except the murdering part. While very physical game shows like this happened, are they still around? In the Western world, I just don't see anything like that anymore. Not to a gladiator's extent. Reed Tucker of the New York Post said in 2019 that the film correctly predicted the widening gap between the rich and poor, depicting homeless shanty towns and skyscrapers for the wealthy, resembling the real New York City in Los Angeles, and societal obsession with reality TV. Let's not forget The Running Man wasn't the only messed up show that everyone seemed to like. Look, I've rambled on for far too long, so I'll leave one last point. Now that we live in a time of advocacy for diversity, I noticed something. Even though this is set in America, the male and female lead aren't even from an English-speaking country, let alone American. Even some of the stalkers are from certain descents, not just white Americans. I must say, this kind of diversity would fit well in today's society. Blade Runner 2019 You'd think I'd have a lot to talk about in the story world, but I actually don't. It's just too dark and too advanced. I guess that's how cyberpunk is though. To summarise most of the points, we don't have flying cars, buildings are way too big, AI isn't as developed enough to mimic humans perfectly, there's no shortage of real life animals for there to be a need to own artificial ones, we haven't got to colonisation yet, the city is vast but I guess the greater Tokyo area is comparable in size, and air pollution? Good Christ! From an environmental perspective, we are really straying further away from this, and thank god for that, it's a bit depressing. Despite not saying much about the story world, one little detail I will talk about is this. Get a load of this billboard. Yes, it's huge, but it's still flat in 2D. 
There are those anamorphic billboards that have appeared all over the world now. At an angle, it looks 3D. Even billboards from some of the made-up 2010s never did this. Bravo to them. Several market leaders that were promoted in this film have faced setbacks since the film's release. Here are a few. Atari suffered from the video game market crash in 83. Their position in the console market fell due to new competitors. After the failure of the Jaguar, Atari left the console market in the mid-90s. They're still around, but they're a former shadow of what they once were. Pan Am were on the decline already, but faced financial and reputational setbacks to a horrible demise. After the bombing of Pan Am Flight 103 over Scotland in 1988, Pan Am faced a $300 million lawsuit and was fined for 19 security failures. Despite Pan Am being a huge international airline, they struggled domestically because throughout their business, Pan Am was denied permission to operate in the US because competitors convinced Congress that Pan Am would use political clout to monopolize US air routes. Because of this, Pan Am flights were more reliant on fuel for international flights, which would be troublesome during times of rises in fuel prices. One happened in the 1973 oil crisis, and the other, which finished them off, was the Persian Gulf War. Pan Am ceased operations in December 1991. Coca-Cola released New Coke in 1985, a new and improved taste. While taste test results showed the taste was better, the public's nostalgia for the old taste made the move a disaster. Eventually moving back to the old taste two months after the release, and discontinued New Coke in 2002. It has recovered its market position since then. Cuisinart, I believe that's pronounced, a company known for kitchen appliances, suffered financial trouble in the mid-80s. The entire market began to shrink, as many people who wanted food processors already had one. Supplies came from Japan and Hong Kong. As the dollar sunk in comparison to yen, supplies were getting more expensive, making variable costs higher. They filed for bankruptcy in 1989, but were bought by Conair Corporation. They are still a big name in the market. Shameless self-promotion. One of my university projects, Metal Sinew Introductory Sequence, which can be found on YouTube, is inspired by Blade Runner. Do check it out by clicking the card on the top right. Akira, 2019. Let's get one thing out of the way. The film correctly predicted the location of the 2020 Olympics. Before Covid, the original opening ceremony was supposed to begin with Kaneda on his motorbike. There are attempts to replicate Kaneda's bike. The replicants I've seen, however, are not particularly fast, or at least don't show its potential. Another channel is showing development of another replicant. By the time I release this, it could be completed, I don't know. I simply googled some advanced motorbikes. A good example can be the British Arc Vector. Electric charged. Given the fact that Kai's bike can charge batteries, I assumed all of their bikes were electric too. Flat to full in 40 minutes. Range of 436 kilometers. 0 to 100 in 3.2 seconds. When Kaneda was playing chicken with the leader of the other bike gang, he was going 154 kilometers an hour. The Arc Vector's top speed is 200 kilometers an hour. Kaneda probably wasn't close to max speed, but who knows. Kaneda's bike also has 200 horsepower. Several electric bikes have achieved this, such as the electric Lightning LS218 in 2014. It's also the fastest street legal motorbike going 351 kilometers an hour or 218 miles. I think we have surpassed Kaneda's bike in terms of performance. Now let's compare Neo Tokyo to our Tokyo. As predicted, buildings are ridiculously high in this future. Very flashy, but then again, the nightlife in Tokyo has always been flashy to begin with, but no random spotlights and no 3D holograms. There are plenty of rundown areas, not as clean as what it is today. Japanese people are known for their social etiquette of politeness and respect, yet keep to themselves. Well, young people sure as hell have abandoned that in this timeline. I guess it's in true cyberpunk fashion after all. A sense of societal decay. A war can do just that. World War 3 was in this timeline. After World War II, Japan went from, as some internet users put it, Imperial Japan to Anime Japan. You know, a more positive look. I'm surprised Tokyo ended up like this after World War III. I guess there wasn't another post-war economic miracle. But still, you'd think 31 years after a world war, Japan's economy would recover to the point where they could rebuild the old parts of Tokyo and refurbish Neo-Tokyo. Of course, there are other factors that need to be taken into account, such as the rampant corruption and the large government funding needed to seal Akira away in the first place. But still, you'd think there'd be some funding left to clean up the city. If another world war did happen like this, I don't think Tokyo would end up looking the way it is here. 
The Japanese way of thinking, living, working, and honor would never allow it. Unless a big recession happened that Japan didn't recover from. But in reality, this is long after 2008 and before COVID recessions. But even in those recessions, Japan were doing okay. Mobile flying vehicles like this are in development, but they're definitely not armed. Besides, that looks way too hard to control. Haven't seen any portable laser weapons or orbital ones either, but who knows what kind of top secret mumbo jumbo weaponry is out there. Pacific Rim, 2013 to 2025. Well, the gigantic robots known as Jaegers are the main attraction here. So, how close are we to this? Uh, Baby steps. Thank god we don't have kaiju. Buildings and architecture are not mental. Pretty much the same as it is today. Its sequel set in 2035 isn't too overblown. Yes, the occasional 3D hologram or two, but building-wise, I say it's doable. But then anything that's related, influenced, or built dedicated to stopping kaiju in any way is super duper sci-fi, because of course, we've never been in a position to build something like this. Donald Trump's wall was never going to be this high. There's a kaiju-related religious movement in the film? Well, there are no kaiju in real life. Newly created religions are a thing. Not in Hong Kong where this is set, but in Japan. This isn't recent, but there was an influx of religions in the 19th and 20th century. Even today, religions and philosophy can be created from anything. A bush talked to me. Brilliant, what did it say? What did the bush say? Let's live our lives by what the bush said, you stupid fucking cunts. For example, Jediism is a thing. You know, Star Wars. This is not a joke to some people. Since I'm talking about the future now, I can start speculating. So my point is, newly created religions can still be a thing. Next, I'm going to take a slight deviation and talk about a game. Admittedly, this future story world doesn't cover the whole game, and considering we're up to 2025, you probably know what it is already. Black Ops 2, 2025. Ha! <laughs> they think we still use the 2012 YouTube layout. In my opinion, that was the worst one. 55 million subs, but only 670 million views? For 55 mil, I'm expecting at least 10 billion views. 144 videos, not including the one that was triggered upon assassination if you got that ending. That's an average of only 4.6 million views a video. The only thing unrealistic here is the subscriber count. That's too good. Nobody with less than a billion total upload views has a subscriber conversion rate that huge. Realistically, that channel should have about 3 million subs? Soldiers can apply optical camouflage. There is such a thing called quantum stealth material that has been patented. It works to a decent degree. Nano gloves? We're not that close really. As of 2014, there are gecko gloves that can help people climb glass walls specifically. Which is funny because the mag gloves in Advanced Warfare, set mostly in the 2050s, can't cling onto glass. You remember Ziggy? The closest thing we have are MAVs, micro air vehicles because some of them are being developed to look like insects and other small animals. Can these be fitted with small attack capabilities like Ziggy? Well, I'm well aware of the smallest firearms and tasers. You decide whether something like this can be fitted into MAVs by 2025. As for robots and stuff, remote-controlled robots like UGVs, unmanned ground vehicles, are already a thing, and they are armed. Albeit the ones I've seen that are armed are remote-controlled. Autonomous AI-operated UGVs do exist, but they're usually for non-violent purposes. They might never be armed due to ethical concerns and the high risk involved. Also, you know, Judgment Day? Will armed autonomous AI robots be a thing by 2025? I doubt it. There's a woman president in this game. The next 2024 election will determine whether this prediction will age well or not. The game depicts a second Cold War. In reality, this has only been theorized, not declared or established. The main countries talked about are the US, China, and Russia. The second Cold War in-game portrays tense relations between the US and China, while Russia is more neutral, but will pick a side depending on your actions. In reality, US relations between both countries have been quite tense. For example, factors regarding relations with China include the COVID pandemic, treatment of Hong Kong, and Taiwan to name a few. Russian relations were, past tense, a bit more laid back, and in a way, I guess US relations between these countries were somewhat accurate. Were somewhat accurate. But then the Ukraine invasion came in and ruined everything. I'm recording this in March, during the invasion of Ukraine. 
So Russo-American relations could get far worse by the time this is released. One last point. Remember that club in the mission Karma? Remember the dubstep playing there? Well, dubstep has lost a lot of its popularity at this point, so I doubt this would be playing in clubs in the future. Ghost in the Shell, 2029. This film is a bit too advanced in terms of cybernetics. We still have a long way to go. I don't know why anymore, but I was under this impression that this was set in Hong Kong, but apparently this is the fictional Newport City in Japan, presumably on the north side of Osaka Bay. I think what threw me off is the lack of hiragana and katakana on signs and billboards. Considering the apartment complexes are so cluttered together, this reminds me of Kowloon than anything. Kowloon's walled city is considered an inspiration of cyberpunk landscapes for its disorganized hyper-urbanization and breakdown in traditional urban planning. There's even the iconic plane that flies at low altitude. The fact is, the director did base the location on Hong Kong. Given this, I will compare the look of this city mostly to Hong Kong instead of Japan. While the walled city was demolished in 94, in the aftermath, small cheap apartments are still around, given that Hong Kong has been the world's least affordable housing market in years. So bad to the point that cage homes have become a thing in older urban districts. Despite the walled city going, the cluttered, low standard way of living is still here. If this is how some people have to live, then I guess this sadly suits the poorer side of the cyberpunk vibe. If the housing market gets worse, then I wouldn't be surprised if this is Hong Kong by 2029. It's pretty much there. But I don't think Japan will end up like this. The closest to small housing in Japan was Tokyo's Capsule Tower, built in the 70s, but now it's on the debate of demolition. Capsule hotels exist for a cheap stay, and they were rented out during recession to house the unemployed and homeless, given that Tokyo is also an expensive housing market. Architecture as a whole isn't too big. Yes, there are exceptions, but you have to go deep into the city. Location-wise, perhaps this film might age quite well after all. Despite the technological over-advancement, some of this film is still worthy of talking about. More specifically, its depiction of the internet and multiple networks. The closest thing this reminds me of is this newly emerging metaverse. I can only see it getting embraced in more industries throughout the world as decades pass. However, there are concerns with a growing metaverse. For example, many companies may embrace a metaverse, but the feasibility of accessing sensitive areas like finances can grow too. Why am I bringing this up? The puppet master, the antagonist, can wander through various networks with ease. Imagine creating an AI program that can function on its own and unleashing it into the metaverse to do whatever damage possible. I'm sure it'll be time consuming to create such a thing, but it's probably not impossible. Where was my wallet? Demolition Man 2032 This is another potentially well-aged film. I mean, we still have a while to go before 2032. Cryonics used in the context of this film is at this point not possible, given the damages cryopreservation can give. They apparently had this in 1996. The film depicts getting fined for swearing. Not just that though, even the tamest of words like hell aren't even acceptable. The closest thing we've seen is Count Dankula getting an £800 fine for breaching the UK Communications Act. To elaborate, as a joke, he turned his girlfriend's pug into the least cute thing he could think of, which was a Nazi, training the dog to respond to gas the Jews and raising a paw after hearing Sieg Heil. Oh god, that's not far off, is it? There are some words that have been replaced. No greetings. What seems to be your boggle? My boggle? But with all officers already patrolling in a citywide crisis net, it should be just a matter of TikToks before we... You are even better live than on Laserdisc. And the joy joy way you pause to make a glib witticism before doing battle with that strangely weapon scrap in those roundhouse punches... Posse, look, this isn't the Wild West, okay? I thought your life force had been prematurely terminated. Yeah, I thought I was history too. I don't think there's going to be any drastic changes like that anytime soon. Mm. Oh, hold on. But how's this? Demi Lovato thinks the term aliens is derogatory to extraterrestrials? Mm. What's this now? Australia renames shark attacks negative encounters to dispel man-eating monster perception? Maybe I'm wrong. Cars that have the option of self-driving are in the film. Self-driving cars, as of now, are around. There are these SAE levels that classify each car's automated system. As of January 2022, there are no public examples of levels 4 or 5. 
Driving automation will probably be much more commercially available by 2032, and I do believe level 5 autonomy could possibly be achieved by that year. The film shows some sort of virtual sex scene, but I assure you we have progressed far beyond that. VR porn is already here. Not only that, but there are already haptic suits that can cover the torso, arms and feet that can help with immersion in ordinary VR experiences. But look at the haptics for arms and feet. You cannot convince me that you can't, theoretically, wrap those around a penis. Give it a few years and I'm sure we'll have a haptic flashlight or something that can simulate stimulation. The only upside to the film's virtual sex scene is that you get to see your partner's face, because in current VR situations, it's just somebody you don't know. Unless, of course, you're into stranger sex. I won't judge you for it. I'm getting carried away, aren't I? Where am I even facing? Am I even facing the right direction? COVID-19 discouraged physical greetings like shaking hands, which is not common inside the story world. Remember when there was a shortage of toilet paper? This world doesn't even use it anymore, instead using something called the three seashells method. There are supposed instructions, but they seem really inefficient and a waste of solid material. It's not even proposed that the shells get extremely sanitized and reused. But then again, who needs toilet paper when you have bidets? Certainly that's more environmentally friendly. In fact, some have speculated that the shells simply hide buttons for a bidet. Sounds like a better option than the other method. Well, there you have it. What can we learn from this? The future isn't as developed as people thought it would be. Of course it's not wrong to think big about the future. Your ideas may not age well when the story year comes about, but I won't call you an idiot for thinking big. I mean, we all have to think big about our own future, don't we? If you have a sci-fi story idea, while it's okay to use your imagination to the full and create the most futuristic world possible, it's also okay to ground and present your ideas. Don't make them too futuristic, especially in architecture and predictions in societal change. Perhaps in a few decades time, your ideas may age beautifully like The Running Man or Demolition Man. And with that being said, I'm out of here. You know, this isn't so bad.